The state of science in America is currently not good. I'm probably not telling you anything that you don't already know. Our president is a blithering moron uh, who we knew even before we elected him to be president of the United States. We knew that he thinks climate change is a hoax created by the Chinese, for instance, because he tweeted it many times, like dozens of times. Every time it snowed anywhere, climate change is a hoax. But he became president of the United States anyway because there are a lot of idiots in this country and also the system is rigged. He immediately started memory holding any mention of climate change on government websites and screwing with science in a load of other ways, like National Park employees being muzzled from making evidence-based claims or Health and Human Services employees being stopped from discussing gun violence uh, research. The Department of the Interior removed scientific reasoning from the protection of the endangered species list and 30 species were then removed from the list for no rational reason. The DOI also prevented federal employees from attending scientific conferences. The Environmental Protection Agency flouted their own standards in choosing advisors and stopped collecting important data on pollutants. One third of all federal advisory committees were cut via executive order. The HHS banned the use of, fe of fetal tissue research. Doctors were prevented from discussing abortion with low-income women. Oh, and then researchers at the CDC were cautioned against using words like transgender, vulnerable, fetus, and evidence-based. And, you know, all of that is just a tiny sample. I highly recommend you head over to the website of the Union of Concerned Scientists and just scroll through the examples they've collected to really internalize just how many attacks on science the Trump administration has engaged in. And all of that stuff I've just discussed was actually before the pandemic hit. More than a year ago, Joe Biden tweeted, we are not prepared for a pandemic. Trump has rolled back progress President Obama and I made to strengthen global health security. We need leadership that builds public trust, focuses on real threats, and mobilizes the world to stop outbreaks before they reach our shores. Huh, turns out he was right. In addition to all of the things I mentioned before, Trump gutted our uh, United States pandemic response agencies and left our strategic national stockpile dangerously understocked, which you may recall is why we ran out of much needed supplies like N95 masks pretty early on. And then Trump himself continued to deny the science of the virus and the science behind the ideal response to that virus, stating that it's no big deal that it would be gone in no time, that people could just inject bleach to cure it, that shutdowns are useless, that masks are useless, that quarantine is useless, all of which flew in the face of what his own administration scientists were trying to say. And the result? Nearly 9 million Americans have been infected thus far, including Trump, his family, and much of his administration, and 226,000 deaths in America as of this recording, more than anywhere else in the entire world. Honestly, I was one of those people back in 2016 who said, holy shit, a Trump presidency is going to be a fucking disaster. And even I didn't realize just how bad things were going to get. And I mean, I haven't even mentioned all of the non-science stuff, like, you know, the Supreme Court stuff. But Jesus Christ, this is bad. So now that we are quickly approaching the 2020, the end of the 2020 election, uh, a lot of people who value science are rightfully pointing out that we need to get Trump out of office. In October, for instance, the editors of Scientific American endorsed a presidential candidate for the first time in the magazine's 175-year history, writing that the evidence and the science show that Donald Trump has badly damaged the U.S. and its people because he rejects evidence and science. And they followed that endorsement a week later with a plea on November 3rd, vote to end attacks on science. 
Biden and Kamala Harris have jumped on this messaging with Harris recently tweeting, it's not controversial to say that at Joe Biden and I will listen to scientists. Hell, even back in April, when more than 50 scientists endorsed Biden in an open letter, Biden replied, unlike our current president, I will always choose science over fiction. And yet, I mean, you knew there was going to be an and yet, didn't you? I mean, that's kind of my thing. And yet. It is completely undeniable that we must get Trump out of office uh, for his horrific fascism, yes, but also for his relentless attacks on science that have directly led to the deaths of hundreds of thousands of Americans. But is it true that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will always choose science over fiction? Will they always listen to scientists? The answer to that appears to be Maybe, uh, but maybe not if the scientists disagree with voters and big donors. Let's talk about fracking. Hydraulic fracking is a process of extracting natural gas reserves uh, that are trapped in shale rock located thousands of feet underground. By blasting that shale with high pressure chemicals that allow the gas to slip out from the rock. This has led to the United States regaining some energy independence in the previous decade um, and getting um, Americans now get cheaper energy rates because of it. But it has also caused a lot of problems. The process of fracking can lead to toxic chemicals like ethylene glycol, for instance, getting into the water supply, uh, usually through poor well design uh, or spills like the 8,000 gallons of fluids that Chesapeake Energy dumped in Dimmick, Pennsylvania back in 2009. A 2017 Duke University study found that 16% of fracking wells spill liquids each year, or 6,600 incidents in four states over a decade. They only looked at four states. That's how many incidents they found. Last year, researchers at Johns Hopkins conducted a meta-analysis of the past decade of fracking and health research, and they found a significant link between fracking and preterm births, high-risk pregnancies, asthma, migraine headaches, fatigue, nasal and sinus symptoms, and skin disorders, with pregnancy and birth outcomes being the link that they found most concerning. The fracking process also releases huge amounts of uh, methane into the water supply and into the air as a byproduct of the process. Then there's the problem of where and how the fracking is done, like how the most accessible shale deposits happen to be located under the feet of poor rural people with their own well systems and not a lot of political pull. So for a long time, companies were fracking in these areas without performing water quality tests, for instance, uh, so that when the residents started complaining about a noticeable drop in water quality, the companies could just shrug and say, well, it was probably always like that. And those same, same companies could then build access roads and move heavy equipment into otherwise pristine wilderness without much oversight, screwing up delicate ecosystems. It's a flawed system that has been growing so quickly that many scientists are concerned that the process is outpacing the science. There are so many ways that fracking might be affecting the health of humans and the environment around us that someone needs to pump the brakes. Even researchers who think that fracking can be done safely still have concerns. For instance, Robert Jackson at Duke University says, the question isn't can hydraulic fracturing be done safely, it's will it be done safely? Even if you think that it's possible to blast toxic chemicals uh, a mile or two beneath our drinking water without those chemicals ever coming back up and infecting that water, maybe that is possible, uh, you can't argue that these companies aren't seriously screwing up when it comes to preventing uh, spills. 
There might not be a scientific consensus that fracking must be banned outright immediately, but it does appear that there's a consensus saying, hey, fracking can be extremely dangerous and we need to fully study it and regulate it and yes, maybe ban it if that's where the research goes before we let companies blast the shit out of rural areas. But Joe Biden's policy on fracking right now is I will not ban it. Kamala Harris even repeated this during a recent debate. Harris herself is anti-fracking, but acknowledges that Joe Biden absolutely 100% will not ban it. And why? Well, the campaign has gone to great lengths to reassure the tens of thousands of voters who are currently making bank in the fracking industry in key battleground states like Pennsylvania. He even managed to get two large fracking unions to endorse him in the hope that their members will believe Biden when he says that he's pro-fracking and ignore the Trump campaign, which keeps insisting that Biden will in fact ban fracking despite the fact that Biden says he 100% will not. Does that mean that Biden is anti-science? I would hesitate to say that he is, though I do think that he has a cynical view of science, as most politicians do. The evidence that fracking is dangerous is becoming overwhelming, but what's not clear is if those dangers can be fixed through tougher regulation, which many industry leaders are still worried that Biden will enact. But this is all conjecture. Biden won't come out and state strongly that he will follow the science on fracking regulation because he knows that that will damage him in the eyes of swing state voters and a $30 billion industry. My point here isn't to say that Biden is worse for science than Trump. Let's be clear, a trash can full of rotting turnips would be better for science than Trump. I'm just saying that it's important to remember that a Biden presidency isn't going to launch us into a scientific utopia. Trump has pushed the Overton window too far for that. Back in 2016, we may have been able to have a meaningful presidential debate about whether or not a candidate understands the science on complicated political topics like fracking or nuclear energy or even crude space flight. But now that's unthinkable because Trump has forced the conversation to be so much stupider. Did China invent global warming? Did China invent a virus? Do viruses even exist? So vote for Biden, obviously, but do it with the understanding that once he is president, we still need to work hard to make sure that he's listening to the science, even when the science is politically inconvenient.